everyone, so here's another video about my four-wheel camper. This one's going to show the sewing process. I don't know if it's gonna be completely instructional. I don't think you'll be able to sew one after just watching my video, but I do hope that it helps you figure out some of the problems that you encounter as you make your own. If you haven't already, check out the video I made before this, which kind of shows where I bought all my material and how I plan for it. And then in this video, I'll be showing the actual sewing process. So after I planned as much as I could, which I probably planned a little too much, honestly, it was time to start making my first cuts in my material. So I was fortunate to have an awesome workspace over at the University of Colorado Boulder. I had these massive workbenches that I could lay everything out at. This project would have been quite impossible if I was trying to do it at my kitchen table. So what I'm doing here is taking the 13 yard long, 61 inch wide piece of vinyl coated polyester and I'm just ripping it to the proper width, which is the height of my camper. One important thing that I did when cutting this canvas is actually leave an extra two to three inches below my total height of my camper. That two to three inches gave me something to grab on when I installed the canvas onto the camper. We'll be showing that in future videos. Before we go any farther, let's just talk about the tools that you'll need for this project. The first is a cutting mat like this. These are super handy. The next things you'll need are these rulers that have awesome markings on them. Apparently they're called quilters rulers. Another thing is a rotary cutter like what I show here. That's great for the vinyl and then obviously some good sewing scissors. Link below for all this material. In order to get acquainted with the machine, I started with a very simple project. The first thing I made was the Arctic Liner Hanger. Here's a scrap sample that I made while figuring everything out. You can see it's a three inch wide piece of canvas and then a two inch wide piece of Velcro. This whole thing is gonna live up the top of my camper and allow me to stick things to at a later date. So we're back in the camper and I just, I wanna show you what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the Arctic Liner attachment points. And that's right up here. You can see there's a flap. This is two inch Velcro and it goes all the way around. So I made it in four pieces and then I just put it up on each of the four walls. And that's gonna allow me to put an Arctic liner in later, which just means essentially like a wool blanket type of thing. I haven't made it yet, but it's gonna hang here, have window openings, and just give me more insulation for those cold nights. <laughs> With the warm-up project done, it was time to start tackling more difficult tasks. Here you see me using my full-size paper template that I made in order to try to figure out all the window folds, creases, seams, etc. I was super nervous about cutting into the windows, so obviously I had my wife do it. It's important to note that even though our windows are 15 by 30 inches, that doesn't mean you just cut a 15 by 30 inch hole. Here, let me show you on this template that I made. So here's a little paper template that I made. I actually ended up making a ton of these, but I just wanted to show you how I actually cut inside and then fold over an extra two inches of hem. This happens all the way around on the actual window material as well. Hopefully that makes a little more sense. And this is what that looks like on the actual canvas material. to sew in the screen material, I need an extra flap of vinyl. That's what I'm showing here. 
I'll use my super handy basting tape to get all these folds to stick together until I sew them. So here I'll put down a strip of basting tape, apply the extra strip of vinyl that's going to be the top layer to my mesh, more basting tape on top of that, and then fold the hem over to have a nice clean edge. Notice right now we're looking at the inside of the canvas so that fold leaves a nice clean edge to protect against elements such as rain and snow. You can now see how the screen's gonna get laid down and then the vinyl is going to fold over to sandwich the screen and secure it inside the sidewall. This vinyl cuts with a really clean edge, but still I wanted to give a hem on everything that would be exposed to the elements. So here you can see me adding a hem to that flap that's going to secure the screen on the sidewall. With all the securing flaps in place, we could now put down our mesh screen. I again used basting tape to hold the screen in place and then use basting tape yet again to fold the flaps over and hold those in place as well. With the securing flaps in place, we can now put additional basting tape on top of those to put Velcro on three sides of the window. I was super fortunate to have access to an awesome sewing machine, a Kingsman model with a walking foot. This is actually the same model that SailRight.com is always using. If you happen to have the same machine as me, this is how you'll thread it. You'll send the thread up and around, down to this little post here, wrap it around this guy a few times for some tension, loop it down, comes through, goes to that hook up top, from the top down low, and then towards your needle through each anchor point. If you didn't already know, here's what a walking foot means. It just means that on top, instead of the fabric sliding through, there's a physical foot that pulls it through. Here we're doing a bit of back stitching. One of the hardest challenges of sewing a project like this is just managing your fabric as it passes near the machine. It absolutely helps to work in teams. That way when you get frustrated with things like broken needles, broken thread, and all those other things you can swap out to keep moving forward. If everything goes well, you're gonna sew two stitches on each side of the Velcro on three sides of the window, the left, right, and top. At this point in time, the bottom is still free. There's a lot of things we still need to do down there. Like I said before, managing your fabric is a big task with a big piece like this. The first step in the window fabrication will look like this. We have three strips of Velcro on three sides. Each one is stitched down along the edge. Again, notice that this bottom area is not sewn yet. This is where we're gonna make a pretty complicated seam later to put our flaps onto our sidewall. 
friendly reminder, these are the flaps that I'm talking about. If you haven't seen this yet, go check out my other video. First, we'll make that privacy flap. This is 35 inches wide, 18 and a quarter inches tall. That's to accommodate both the extra two inch wide Velcro around the window, as well as a hem that we'll put in. After the hem is complete on three sides, we'll place a one and a half inch wide piece of Velcro along the perimeter of this privacy flap. Next, you'll have to make the clear plastic flaps that are gonna go in between the privacy flaps and the outer side wall. The Velcro can't simply be sewn into the clear vinyl material. It really needs a backing. For that, I'll use more of the vinyl coated polyester or canvas material. To get a clean edge on both the front and the back, you'll need a slightly complicated hem. I'll let you figure that out on your own. Hopefully it's clear how these two flaps nestle together. They both have Velcro that's gonna to attach to the sidewall in the necessary places. It's finally time for that lower interior seam. First, pull back that internal flap. You can even temporarily tape it down to get it where it needs to be. Then use the Velcro to align the clear plastic flap first. Then, just like before, use the Velcro of the privacy flap to align that as well. Give it a quick flip to make sure everything looks good on the outside as well. Then grab the basing tape because it's time to finish up this lower seam. actually use a layer of basting tape between every layer of material on that lower seam to ensure everything stays aligned when I'm sewing. Then I removed that sacrificial piece of basting tape that just held my flap in place while I aligned everything. Then obviously we still weren't done with the basting tape as we had to finish this seam. The most important part of this is how the seam is folded up from the inside. This should mean that moisture from the outside would have to flow up against gravity in order to enter through that lower seam. This is the seam that really pushed the machine to its limits. I don't think there's any way you could do this with a domestic sewing machine.
So since I started shooting this video, obviously a few things have changed. I have this lovely sling now from a surf trip down in Mexico. Spoiler alert, I'm not much of a surfer, but if you're interested in seeing uh, me get some stitches, check out the video up there somewhere. Back to the truck camper. So after I finished that first window, I was really proud of myself. Here's a photo of the day I got done. And then what I did is I actually made one window first, like one complete window, made sure everything lined up. After I did have that done, then I went ahead and assembly lined it. So I made three more flaps, all the Velcro I needed, all the different extra fabric pieces that go around the window, all of that. I kind of assembly lined the whole thing and that worked out really well for me. Then once I had all the pieces ready to go, in one day I was able to get in there and just sew the next three windows. By the time I was done with it, they actually came out really well and I always made the joke that the next time I make another truck camper canvas, it's gonna come out perfect. So after I had all the windows done, I also cut out the, the two, the front and the rear flap. That was super easy, literally two cuts, you're done, those are rectangles. Then it was time to assemble all four flaps. I looked around on the internet a lot before I did this and I finally decided on the full felt seam. I'll link below to a video from Sailrite where I learned how to do it, but it's a really awesome seam. And what it is is essentially, it's a locking seam like that, that's finished on both the inside and the outside, I thought that'd be best for my camper. Without me discussing any more, this is kind of what that final assembly looked like. Obviously, if we're sewing, it's back to the basting tape. I really should have bought stock in this stuff. Again, I'm just not proficient enough in sewing to clearly explain how this seam works. It's pretty much like a fold within a fold. I do show every step in this video, but again, just go watch SailRight.com's video. It's where I learned to make it. I practiced a few times and everything worked out perfect. fabric management was tough before, putting together these big panels in the end was extremely difficult. You can see on the right side there, I actually just took the panel that doesn't have any windows, rolled it up really neatly, that worked out great. I put two stitches down each seam, uh, made them as straight as I possibly could, they came out good enough in the end. Not perfect, but good. So that really concludes the sewing part of this video. Before we, before we leave though, I wanna make one really important point is that I only sewed three out of four of those final seams. I left the camper as one big piece, right? It was one linear piece that I could roll up all by itself. It wasn't a full circle like that. I didn't do this last seam. And I'm so glad I didn't. I measured the camper like a million times. I measured the circumference of the roof and the base and all those things. But for whatever reason in the end, I was still off. And I'm so fortunate that I left extra material and just made the final seam once it was installed. In the next video, I'll go over all of that and I think you'll find it really helpful. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to me. Comment below and I'll get right back to you or find me on social media, however you want. If you found this video helpful, hit like and also subscribe, that just helps me. I love making these videos and I've got another video coming out with the install of the canvas on the camper. So again, thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.